Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Financially Fearless, the podcast show that helps you become financially fearless without sacrificing abundance. We have a super extra special guest today. It's the queen of money blocks and ease. Denise Duffield Thomas is here. I am fangirling. Yay, wow, super extra special. That's cool. <laughs> So special. So Denise is the money mentor for the new wave of online entrepreneurs who want to make money and change the world. Entrepreneur.com called Denise one of the foremost financial advisors for females. And I have personally bought all of Denise's programs, all three of them, the manifesting one, money archetypes, money bootcamp, and all of her books. So I clearly am a fangirl. (laughs) obviously. And her stuff is the real deal though. It will help you overcome money blocks, money sabotages. You can learn about how to position your business around your, like money archetypes for me was just all around how I can actually use my personality and position my business to more ease while like making my business about me. And so that's why I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. Well, you'll have to have me back then because I'm launching a new program on that. So we can talk, we can jam all about that on a whole call. Please. I'm obsessed as you know. Yes. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Um, so Denise, we are going to be talking about debt on this show. Are you ready? I'm so interested to hear your viewpoint on debt. I know it was a, a bonus that you put out recently, actually with money bootcamp, was something that was about paying off debt. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And I'll say it straight off the top. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not an accountant. I can't give anyone financial advice. But what I do is demystify money. And I want us to normalize talking about money, just like we talk about anything in our lives. You think of um, you know, the the stuff that you talk about with your girlfriends, with your friends, with your mastermind buddies, we tell each other our most intimate secrets, yet money is still one of those things that we feel like we're not allowed to talk about, especially for women. You know, we're kind of, we're, we've been gate kept from the conversation, but we mm-hmm. still feel like it's impolite. So yeah, mm-hmm. let's talk about money. I, you know, I love talking about some of the stuff that people make people feel uncomfortable. I publish my tax returns every year yes, online yep. mm-hmm. because it's just fun. Like, why not, why not just talk about it? Like I'm an oversharer about everything. So I may as well overshare about money if it helps people. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yes. She does publish her profit and loss statements too, which is what I, I love reading the profit and loss statements. Cause I feel like just having that like transparency when you own a business, especially in like the online coaching world where we talk a lot about income goals and everyone hitting revenue goals, but then seeing like actually the breakdown of what's going on behind the scenes in a business of like what you're actually spending, what money is coming in, what's going out. So that's been so helpful. I really, really appreciate that you share that online. So let's talk about your outlook on debt. So if you could describe to me your outlook on debt, as you have built a multi-million dollar business, what do you think, like starting from when you were starting your business out, like, did you have debt? Did you have debt when you mm. started your business? Did you go into more debt? Like what kind of was that journey? Okay. I'll tell you the first time I got into, into debt. Um, I was at university and I went in the late nineties um, and a friend of mine came, had a laptop and I was like, Oh, what is this fancy thing? And it was starting to be like one or two people in a, in a lecture would be typing on a laptop. And I remember going, this is so freaking fancy because back then, like you had to go to a computer lab to do your assignments. Right. Mm -hmm. And he goes, Oh, I just went and got it on higher purchase. And I was like, what's higher purchase? Tell me more. And um, he said, Oh, just go to this shop and just answer some questions and they'll give you a laptop. And I went, Oh, so I went in and, and this guy was like, well, what do you earn? And I was, you know, a waitress and a student. And he was like, well, how about we put that you have a boyfriend who pays for your rent? And I was like, okay. okay. I mean, yeah. I was like, well, oh, okay. You're going to give me a laptop. And I walked out with this laptop and it was interest free for a year. And then it was something like 37% interest after that. And I was so clueless. I was 19 years old, right? 19 yeah. years old. Yep. And mm-hmm. I, um, I struggled to make the payments once they kicked in. Mm-hmm. It got stolen. I had to um, pay off this laptop for years. Oh, and so that was my first thing with debt. Then I moved to London in my 20s. Within six months of being there on a student visa, I had an overdraft, 
a personal loan, a maxed out credit card, Mm. because I was so clueless about debt. I, um, I didn't understand interest rates. And I always just, um, no matter how much money I made, or if I had a windfall, I would always be right up the top of my debt limit. Mm-hmm, always mm-hmm. didn't matter yep. what happened that was my energetic debt yes. limit mm-hmm. um and so and I never opened my credit card statements I paid my bill month late every month I was terrible terrible with debt so what I had to do is first of all I had to get to a point where I could actually just look at it and I think this is where our mindset stuff comes up because I just didn't even want to look I was so terrified of this mm-hmm. world of finance Um, And I think our own personal relationship with debt is always related to our upbringing. You know, were we allowed to talk about money? How was was money talked about? For me, it was feast or famine. And that's that's how I treated the whole conversation with debt. Um, So I had to first look at it and get honest and have to find out what interest rate am I paying? What Mm -hmm. date do my repayments go out? What's my minimum repayment? Um, so I, I remember reading one of those snowball your debt books Mm -hmm. and I just went, I'm going to, I'm going to get out of debt. And it took me two years and I've never been in debt since, except for mortgage debt. Um, I pay off my credit card in full every month. I have no consumer debt. I, you know, own my car and I, I paid off my mortgage at one point and then, um, I, and, you know, it was a decent sized mortgage, but then I upgraded to a bigger house. And so I, still have, I have a mortgage again. And um, yeah, so I think debt can be a conscious tool, but there's so much that goes behind that, your, your own personal relationship with it. And I even say, see now I can be a little bit too cautious. Like I'll say to my financial advisor, I want to pay off my mortgage as quickly as possible. Yeah. And they go, that mm. doesn't make Financial no, it doesn't sense. make financial go, sense. Not at all, right? And I right. say, but heart, that's heart math to me. Mm-hmm. Like that's heart math. That will help me sleep at night. Um, and yeah, so I think it's a really interesting thing. I, In my first year of business, I did put a course on a credit card and I remember yeah. it being um, a really big deal and it really did help me. But then... That's when I still lived in London. When I moved back to Australia, I hadn't lived in Australia for 10 years, even though I'm Australian, and I couldn't get a credit card for my new business. Mm. And so I remember reading this quote from Seth Godin, and he said, um, when in doubt, raise the money from your customers by selling them something that they really need, your product. Mm. Mm. And so every time I thought, oh, I'll I'll apply for a credit card again, I just went, or I could do a launch. Mm. Mm-hmm. And I'll pay for it that way. And I still, I still do that. I still do not have a credit card for my business. Wow, really? No, I still don't. Why? Why is that? Um. Well, the, honestly, the first like five times I applied for it, living back in Australia, I got rejected. So I just oh, went, okay. Screw you. So um, yeah. So I, I still don't. So I pay with everything. I mean, I get points because I have a, you know, I have a Visa debit card. Okay. Um, but it's it's not a credit card still. And that's not to say, again, anyone should listen to me and do their business that way. But yeah. whenever I've had a big purchase I wanted to make, I've gone, I'll go launch. How many boot camps do I need to sell? How many yeah. coaching sessions do I need to sell? How many whatever? Right. And it served me really well because that's my personality. I'm instant gratification. And that's yeah. how I got in trouble with debt for a long time. Yeah. That's so amazing, Denise. So you had one time where you put a course on a credit card and then you just like your mindset from that point on was just, I'm always going to raise the money. No, it was because I couldn't get a credit card. I would have kept on doing it. I'm sure. Oh, it was because <laughs> <it's> <laughs> I couldn't because I moved back to the my country. I hadn't lived in for 10 years. I, I moved to London when I was 22. And so I had no credit history in Australia, except for that laptop. Yeah, I bought as a student, and so no one would give me a credit card. Um, I can't believe this. No, you're gonna laugh at this, okay? So yeah. I was. This was still when my my business was um, had made I think close to a million. I was up to seven fifty revenue, and I applied for a credit card again, got rejected. My what? husband, though, the first year he started his business, got yeah. a credit card straight away. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> he got a credit card straight away on a brand new business with no with no revenue. So I just stopped. I just stopped applying. Yeah. So um, what's funny though is that now I've got a personal banker because you know once you start putting so much money through, they're like, "Do you?" And I was like, "I actually don't need one. That's fine." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So in Money Bootcamp, there's a money tracker, right? Yeah. And so what did you use? Was that like the only thing you've ever used to when it came to all of a sudden you were making a whole bunch of money in your business? Was that the main thing you used or was there anything else you used to actually track all this money coming in then money going out? Like what, what kind of things did you start to use at that point? Um, well, obviously bookkeeping was a, was a big thing for me to outsource because, um, I have ADHD. I have the, the number form of ADHD too, which it's, it's not like, um, it's dyslexia for numbers, but I can't pronounce it. It's like dyscalculia or something. Um, and so I couldn't do my own bookkeeping. Um, so I get reports every month from my bookkeeper about, you know, incoming and outgoings and stuff like that. Yeah. But personally, I'm not good at, at, at sticking to a budget. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm really not. I tried it a few times. You know, you can get apps now that just right, right, yeah, for you. But um, I'm always just like, I'll just make more money. And, you know, I, I obviously keep a track. I'm making sure that I'm not overspending or that my business has made a profit. But, you know, my business has made a profit for 10 years Gosh. and it just gets more and more. So it's, I think the, the thing is awareness, right? And this is where the tracking right. comes in in Money Bootcamp is, mm-hmm often we think we're doing work in our business and we're really not. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what I mean by that? When we yeah. go, but I'm doing all this stuff. And you go, yes. yeah, but yeah. are you like, you know. So um, I started um, really being aware of what was coming in and making sure that I was always focused on income producing activities. Okay. And so money, okay. yeah, money tracking yep. for manifesting purposes is completely different to bookkeeping. It's mm-hmm. about awareness, awareness and accountability. Are you doing things that are money yes. producing activities in your yes. business? Mm-hmm. Also, it's about appreciation mm-hmm. because people will say, oh, you know, I'm not making any money. And you go, mm-hmm. well, look at all these other things that are coming in for you. You know, from a law of attraction point of view, sometimes the universe is taking a backdoor approach, right? Yeah. And tracking for manifesting purposes is tracking everything from, you know, a five cents you find on the street to someone giving you a free coffee. Right, right. So you can see the true value of what the universe is bringing in for you. Yeah. Um, and, and also sometimes seeing the difference between free stuff and money. So if you remember, we get we track two things in Money Beat Camp. Mm-hmm. We track actual money. So this is spendable actual cash yep. in all forms, not just from your business. Yeah. But we also track free things of value. Yeah. Because sometimes we're really good at getting free stuff. Yes. With the manifestors. Yes. But there's something there that's stopping us from having actual spendable cash. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. that can be a real sign of a big money block. Yes. Definitely. Yeah. I have noticed that like actually when I was doing the tracker was I noticed how much I was great at like getting money from just other sources magically somehow, you know, like you'd be like, okay, well I need to come up with this amount of money and just magically somehow it would happen. But then I was a little bit, I lacked in a little bit of the areas of like actually making the money myself, like actually making the money through my business. And then once I started tracking it, started seeing oh, okay. Well, I just need to focus a little bit more on doing the things that actually make me money instead of the things that just keep me busy, like not actually doing those things anymore. Right. I get it. That completely makes sense. What do you think about someone like when it comes to that awareness, right? Like, what do you think mm -hmm. about someone who's listening to this, who is carrying debt in their business? Like, since you're so great at just like a lot of the things you do are just bringing awareness to what we're doing with our money and what's happening with our money. So there's definitely so many listeners in my audience um, who just avoid looking at debt. Like they just avoid the credit card comes and it's like a panic attack every month it comes, or it's just, I'm just not even going to look at it. I, I will just pay the minimum on the credit card. So for someone who is carrying debt in their business right now, what do you think would be the yeah. best advice to give them? Well, first of all, I understand, you know, as I said, I didn't, I just didn't even look. I was just terrified to look. Mm -hmm. Um, So I love talking about 
forgiveness as a personal development tool. And it can be a manifesting tool because it releases energy that we're expending unnecessarily. You know, it's, it's having a laptop that has a million tabs open. Mm-hmm. When we have all of that shame and blame sitting there, it is just taking up bandwidth. So um, I, one of the first exercises we do in Money Boot Camp is a list of money memories, right? Mm-hmm. And we, we forgive them, we let them go. When it comes to debt, a really powerful thing we can do is to sit down and write down all the things you're blaming yourself for. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes we have stuff on there of going, I shouldn't have bought that thing. I shouldn't have spent that. I shouldn't mm-hmm. have trusted mm-hmm. that that was going to work out. I shouldn't have lent that money to that person. I shouldn't have let that person not pay me back. And that's why I had to put that on there. So I think if you go and look at the the debt, it's not so simple, right? Because sometimes it's not just that we're, oh, cool, we just we're an overspender or we're really bad with money. Right. There's a story there. Yes. Yes. And it's different depending on what your story is. And so we're talking about money archetypes. Uh, nurturers often get into debt for other people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you think of your debt and you go, what stuff in there is not even mine? Mm-hmm. Or there's stories there about, wow, I'm really bad with numbers or I'm really bad with, um, you know, calculating in interest. That was my thing, right? Because I was like, I'm so bad with numbers. There could be some shame in there too of things that you feel, felt scammed into or tricked into mm-hmm. or you mm-hmm. trusted that you invested in something that was going to have a return. Or there could be stories in there of going, I had to put groceries on my credit card because my ex-husband isn't Mm -hmm. paying alimony. Yep. You know, there could be so many stories of shame and blame and lots of things in there. So I think we have to do, we have to do some forgiveness work on there. One big thing for me that I had to do some forgiveness work around was that um, a lot of our debt in our early days as a couple came from our wedding. And -hmm. it wasn't because of me. It was because of my husband who wanted like matching everything and he was a groomzilla okay (laughs) groomzilla like I remember I bought a dress on eBay for like 150 pounds which is like a couple hundred bucks and he spent months researching like the right socks and the right thing and neither of us felt comfortable asking our friends to contribute to their wedding outfits so we paid for all of the tuxes and all of the dresses because we didn't want to ask so I had this massive resentment yeah. When we sat down and talked about it and dove into it, yeah. Mark, my husband, had to do some, he was like, he was the fat kid growing up mm. who got teased by a lot of people. And so this wedding for him was saying, look at my, look at my beautiful yeah. wife and look at my mm-hmm. beautiful, you know, he lost heaps of weight and look at me. And it, so it was all about showing off and overcoming this deep insecurity that he had about himself. So unless we'd had that conversation, I just was living with this resentment going, I can't believe we're paying off this debt because you wanted matching socks. Yeah. Yeah. For all of your groomsmen that you took six months to, to research. And I had this whole thing about this was your wedding. You didn't even care if it was me, you could have been married anyone. So it brought up all my insecurities about, you know, I'm not worthy and so it was, it was more than the money. Oh my God. It was yeah. so deep for both of us. It um, always is. That. Yeah. It always is. Right. Like, so going back to money archetypes, I'm a maverick and, um, my big thing, the big thing I took away from money archetypes was that I just, I seem to like burn down a lot of things kind of like, I, I remember one of the questions was how can I make my full, my full year's income in 90 days. Like that's one of the questions because it seems like Mavericks, I I believe always like hop around from thing to thing to thing. And that was where a lot of my debt had like started to crew in my business because I would get something successful, like started booking $10,000 clients, my coaching business going great, going great. My husband's like, Hey, like this is working, like stick with this. And I'm like, no, now I need something. else. And then I would completely abandon something that I had built and took time 
and to launch and like to put this in there. Right. And, and then I would just completely abandon it. And then I would yeah. rack up debt because then I was trying to find this other way to do business that was fancy and shiny and new. And then it would, ha- I would go through the cycle again and then, okay, that would eventually become successful. Nope. Burn that down. Don't want to do that thing anymore. Now I want to do this thing. And I was, I was just like, oh my God, like, I can't believe that this is where my debt is truly coming from. Like it's coming from this place of like, for me, I'm a big FOMO person. Like I always fear yes. of missing out, right? Like missing out on the next special extra thing. And like, I realized, oh, my debt is coming from so much of me always being like, oh, I'm going to miss out on something. I'm going to miss out on this thing. I'm going to miss out on that thing. Um, and a lot of my debt kind of came from that place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's always... Well, and- yeah, go it's ahead. always personal. Yeah, it it's is. always personal. Yeah. So for some people, it comes from a place of optimism. There's always going to be more money. No problem. I'll just get more clients. For some people, it's from a place of deep insecurity. Sometimes yeah. it's boredom. Sometimes it's instant gratification. Sometimes it's a lack of details, you know, or just not paying attention to mm-hmm. stuff and not realizing, not knowing the interest rate. Yeah. Um, and so I think with anything in an ex exploration is really important to find out why why is it Mm -hmm. why am I doing this Mm -hmm. sometimes it's a self-sabotage of oh as long as I keep myself in debt then I don't have to do this other thing Mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah because then you have a place like a place for your money to go oh it always has to go to debt it always has to go to debt so now that I am above like a zero like now that I'm above a zero I'm all of a sudden like you know, sometimes I still get a little freaked out at being like, okay, like I had a whole bunch of money come in this month or like now my husband and I are upgrading our beach house and that's freaking me out a little, that's a little bit different, but like, that's freaking me out a little bit, you know? And like, I realize all this stuff that keeps coming up. It's always like telling me, it's always like signaling something like there's, there's a deeper story here. There's something to be said here. There's something to figure out here. And it's usually within you, like the money story you have going on. Always, always. Oh, and that's yeah. why in Money Boot Camp, there's the two lessons, right? There's the, what's your energetic upper limit around what you can earn? Mm-hmm. Because we all have to work on that constantly. And that, that can be related to stories about your upbringing or what other people are earning or stories about your industry. So we, we have our own glass ceiling, right? Yeah. But we also have, and this is why it's, I, always, I put this corresponding lesson in, we also have one where we're comfortable about how much debt we have and how much we're allowed to, mm-hmm. to, to have, right? So we call this your energetic zero. Mm-hmm. And some people are very comfortable being in lots and lots of debt. That's their, that's their ceiling. Mm-hmm. Some people it's zero no matter what. You know, they, it doesn't matter how much money they make, they'll end up with nothing. And some people have um, a savings limit that is their energetic income. Yeah. And so these are the accumulators, right? Which it sounds like you and I are so different to the accumulators. For them, no amount of savings is enough because they keep on pushing it away and thinking, well, that doesn't count. I basically have nothing. Mm-hmm. And so their savings accounts are getting bigger and bigger, but they're just like, no, it's nothing. So what I found with this is this was my first year of coaching and talking about this stuff. I had a client who was um, $70,000 in debt mm-hmm. and she was very comfortable there you know, and she was just paying, paying the minimums. And it was just, just, it is, it was was what it was, right. It was her energetic zero. And we, we worked hard at doing all the mental stuff to pay it off. She got to zero and she joined a $70,000 mastermind the next day because it was just her comfort zone around it. Yeah. It was no big deal. And she's very mavericky as well. Mm-hmm. And so I know that in myself that once I got over the debt thing, you know, and I did all that inner work and I was like, okay, now I have no debt, but I couldn't save anything Yeah, because it felt so unsafe. It felt, it felt like being in trouble for leaving food on my plate at the end of the meal. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it was like, yeah. I have to consume it all. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And as a maverick, maverick's my second, it was um, almost being so comfortable in the feast or famine mm-hmm. that a comfort buffer seemed like I'm going to turn into this weird, soft person who can't survive in the <laughs> yeah. world because I'm too comfortable. So I have to spend it all. So then I'll be motivated to work and to manifest. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I started with saving $4 a week. Yeah, And 
Yeah, just as a direct debit. And then I yep. made it seven and 11. But for that first year of acclimatizing myself to more savings, I raided that savings account so many times. Oh, like I'd the transfer, like, like transfer yeah. the money. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I transferred it to like an online savings account, ING yeah. account. But yeah. I would be like, oh, but I need it for this now. So I would steal it back. Yeah. Just to get to that zero. And it took me a long time to acclimatize to having more than I needed yeah. excess money because mm-hmm. it felt I just never had it, never had a buffer. My we lived that way as a kid too, feast or famine. And so it took me a while, but within a couple of years, I remember I had a million dollars in um in cash. Amazing. Yeah. Um, amazing. and I'd paid off and I'd paid off my mortgage. Um and then you start to go, wow, what do I do with this abundance? And yeah. my thing is it was always like, well, what's the next bigger thing? And then that's when I upgraded my house, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. built a house, and then I bought a holiday house. And mm-hmm. then sometimes because I, I, I can see the ocean right there, but there's a house that's closer. And I remember sometimes I keep on looking at it and going, <laughs> what about that one? <laughs> yeah. And it's that. It's that my mentality of going, well, there's always more and expand, yeah. expand. And so there's part of me that still goes, well, what do you do with that extra abundance? My husband, thank God, is is way more sensible than me. So, you know, we invest, we we buy investment. Yep. Boring as shit investment. Boring, properties. I know. It's so boring. Boring. <laughs> and then do you know what we did this week? We found an old bank that's been turned into like, it's like a money pit, right? And both of us were like, oh, my God, this can be such a cute little boutique hotel. Because we've got that, we're always like, oh, what's next, right? <laughs> and so we've been had this very boring investment strategy of buying, you know, a boring property that has X percent yield and all this kind of stuff. And I said to him, like, every three or four properties, can we just go buy something that's a bit more fun? Yeah, yeah. But we're trying to go, okay, Let's go to the auction, see if the numbers work out. Like not from a place of, yeah, we can do it. Who cares about the numbers? It'll be fun to go, okay, let's do this sensibly. And it's really hard because we're both rulers and the rulers are just like, why not? Just work harder, make more money. Mm -hmm. Um, And I know I'm sounding like total lucky bitch problems, of going, oh, what do I do with this extra cash? But it's the same. You get it. It's the same yes. personality of when I went, why not get yep. a laptop on higher purchase when I was 19? Yes, I know exactly. It's gonna, the same yeah. feeling. It's even the same feeling, right? Like it's even like when we first bought our the home that we're in now is the same feeling as when we're looking at our second home and upgrading that it's the same. Like I get the same emotions, like the same fear, the same, it it feels the same in my body. Like it feels exactly the same. So I know exactly what you mean. Like then in our next up level, like our next thing that we, you know, have or do or whatever, it's going to, it's going to be the same feeling. Yeah. Well, yeah. When we bought this, this house, so we live near the beach. It was a big stretch for us. We actually saw a house um, around the corner. And as I was walking around it, I went, and I heard this voice saying, get out, this mm-hmm. isn't your house. Mm-hmm. So we left the house and we were just talking in front of the property here. And this used to be an old apartment building where we built this house. And I was like, what about this one? And we were with our financial advisor and he was just like, are you crazy? And I went, I just said to him, tell me how much money we would need. I'll go away and find the money and I'll bring the money back. And I almost had this um, vision of myself bringing this sack of money and just going, here, here's the money. And he was like, ha ha. And I went, no, I'm, I'm really serious. And so that's what happened. We did a massive big launch and every day of that launch, I was like, but I'm going to be living near the beach. So I'm going to yeah. send that extra. I'm going to be living near the beach. So I'm going to reach out to that person. And yeah. then, um, so then we were building this house which took a while and this farm came up in the country. Oh yes. And I was, yeah, I was like, I was saying to Mark, let's just go and see properties, just dream uh. building for the future. And I was like super pregnant, dragging him around, looking at these properties. And I stepped out on this land and I went, oh, and Mark looked at me and he goes, oh. <laughs> he, he's like, going. 
he's just going no no don't and I was like ah. and so I invited our financial advisors to come out because they were like no 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 and I just said again I just went tell me how much money the money and I'll go away and make the money so anyone who bought money boot camp for me in October 2018 that was me that was you the, did that was the farm. was it the bundle one probably was Yes, it was the book. Maybe, I, I don't remember. know. Yes, I remember this. Because mm-hmm. I wanted, because I had the desire to buy this farm so badly. Yeah. Um, and all reason went out the window because I'm like, there's always more money. And there is. And now I, I know I don't have to create stress for myself. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah. It's such an unlearning to go, I'll buy this bank. So it's a bank that's turned into a house. It's very freaking cool. It's haunted as fuck, by the way, Um, to say, I'm going to go to the auction and not do it as a personal challenge to see if I can. Okay. Right. To put myself in a place where I have to have the adrenaline to do this big launch and pull the magic out of my butt to surprise and delight people. Okay. It's such an unlearning to then go, hang on, wait, do the numbers work out? And can I walk away from it? And that's the hard thing because yeah. Maverick's Maverick personality is always like, it's that evil little thing going, let's just do it. Just do it. <laughs> let's just do it. Just do it. Buy it. Um, just buy it. Who cares if it's got like asbestos and like, it'll just make it more fun and stressful. And <laughs> that's the that's the part of my personality that I have to watch all the time yeah and it's the same like you know writing a book called Chillpreneur Chill and Prosper it's yeah. not because I am the person who does nothing it's because I need to put all these things in place to not make it harder for myself right. and that's what the whole book is about is know thyself and prosper yes. not copy someone else's anything you know yes. and the way if you want to flip that around to how you get out of debt, for me as a maverick kind of personality, I had to go, how quickly can I get out of debt? Yes. I bet because I then it's a challenge. You. And then you're yes. like, oh, okay. Yeah. I can make the money for this. Right. Like it's all I'm, about that, that challenge that we need in order to thrive. Right. So if we're talking, we're talking about like how to make money easier. And that's, I think that's a big part of what chill and prosper is going to be about is if obviously it's about chilling and (laughs) prospering, but like, what would you say to my audience? Like one money mindset tip to make business feel more easy. Is it, is it just know thyself? Is that the tip? It is. It is because you have to know what motivates you, what scares you, what thrills you, what, what causes you to take action. Okay. So for your personality, I always say to people pre-sell something, because you will move heaven and earth you will manipulate time and space and you will deliver it Mm -hmm. okay Mm -hmm. someone else though with a different personality that would paralyze them right and that is shitty advice for them because they would feel out of integrity they would feel sick it wouldn't thrill them it wouldn't be exciting so there's no real way to pick one course, one framework and have it work for everybody. You have to know what works for you and your personality. Another example is my course, Money Bootcamp. When I started that 10 years ago, people were saying to me, make it a membership. And I went, no, a membership for me would feel like handcuffs. Mm-hmm. It would feel, I would get bored. I would burn it down. Yep. And so I made it a program that's pay once. You can stay for as long as you want. I've done it for 10 years longer than most people I know who've started memberships, by the way. Yeah, I'm but sure. The mind, but the mindset <laughs> for me is, but I can, I can finish it at any time. I'm not obligated. Yeah. yeah. And even though it's a dumb, it was like in hindsight, I'd go, oh yeah, membership would have been better. But then I'm like, well, maybe it's still not because it doesn't work for my personality. Yeah. Um, you can, you can negotiate anything in your business. And so that's what the book is in like, um, marketing, business models, Mm -hmm. money, mindset, because the pandemic has shown us that even businesses that never thought they could go online had to go online. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can deliver anything, any way you want, no exceptions. And if you don't design it for yourself, 
you will sabotage it. You will get bored. You, you'll get resentful. You won't have longevity. And so it's a whole big permission slip, really, of going, hey, you can do anything however you want. You can charge whatever you want, but you have to know your own personality and you have to understand what, right, what motivates exactly. you. Exactly. Yeah. Or you can burn yourself out on just like a simple, a simple thing, like a simple deliverable thing. And that can like really burn you out on that too. So what would you say? Let's do an example on that one. That's, this is a perfect example. Okay. So if you're an alchemist personality, right? Yeah. Yeah. Alchemists are all ideas all the time. Not so good on follow through. One thing I always say to alchemists is stop promising that you're going to deliver notes after you have a session with someone because you never will. (laughs) So just don't even do it. Don't even promise it anymore and they're just like oh really I can not do that and I go yeah Yeah. you cannot do that it's totally fine so yeah anything anything's up for negotiation it's just I think we go into business sometimes we emulate someone we're a good student so we try and do a course and do it well oh we've never been told that we're allowed to choose ever isn't that great like yeah it takes us a while in entrepreneurship to realize wait a second I don't have to do what these people are doing, right? Like I, I've recently had this like epiphany too. It's so funny because I've been in business for a while, but I had the epiphany when it came to my marketing style. Like I, I tried to get into Instagram. I hate Instagram. I just don't get it. But what works really well for me is actually blogging. Like I like to blog. I can do it on my own time. But I was always like, can I just blog? Like, can I have that permission to just blog and still sign my clients? Like, is that possible? And I was recently at a business retreat and they were like, yes, <laughs> do that. And that was but all I needed. You know what, on that, I was a religious weekly blogger for the first yeah. part of my business. When Instagram started, you know, coming up, I really focused a lot of attention on that. And then because I hadn't been blogging regularly, I lost all my SEO oh, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And so it was only in the last year that I went, oh my God, I'm not for money mindset and money blocks. I was like, I wasn't even on the first couple of pages and everyone on the first two pages, I was like, they've done my money bootcamp. They've done my money bootcamp. They've done, but because they were doing that blogging, right? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And so it's one of those things of going, there really are no rules. Like if you just want to focus on one, you know, one thing, just do it well. Yeah. Because I think also a lot of people now are getting bombarded with so many platforms. They just want to yes. focus on a platform too. And yeah. I've, I've neglected my YouTube channel because I was creating so much social media. So content, much. Yeah. Which is not yeah. good for SEO either. So, you know, right. you can do anything, but you just, just show up and do it and be yeah. consistent. Do it like oh your way, like the thing that makes you, makes your life easier, makes you chill and prosper. Do the thing that aligns with you, not what you think you have to do in order to be successful. Like yes. eliminate that role completely. Just eliminate it. Um, this is a one of the examples from the book, but I had an astrology reading with somebody and I didn't realize until just before it that it was... Um, it, it wasn't a video one. It wasn't audio. It was Skype chat. Hmm. And I loved it because I'm like, I'm an introvert, but I think very fast and I type like a mofo. <laughs> and so did she. And I was like, I, I got off the session and I thought, wow, that was one of the best astrology um, readings I've had. But I, I wonder if she went through a process of going, will yeah. people do this over chat? Like, am she definitely I allowed? Did. Yep. Am I allowed yeah. to do this over chat? Yeah. Is it, can, can it be this easy? But there'll be people who go, but no, I want to see my astrologer face to face. Well, cool. You're not her ideal client. Yeah. But for me, I was like, freak, that was amazing. <laughs> that was so cool because it suited my personality and it was a perfect match. Yes. And instead we often go, oh no, I have to do it the way the customer yes. wants. And then yep. we get burnt out. Yes. Yes. That's exact. Like I've just, I'm so excited for chill and prosper to come out. If it's going to like say this, just even you saying that probably helped so many people in my audience. Like it, pro- it probably just, they're sitting there probably just like, thank you so much for okay. saying I can do that. Yeah. For telling Let me give that you story. another example. Yeah. This is even better. Right. Because I, I went on a book tour in America a couple of years ago in 2017 and I did four events and it was so much work. Anytime you do events, like it's 
the logistics and finding yeah. venues. Is this the one you, when you came to New up, York City? Yes. Oh, I was there. Yes. I was there yes. for that one. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. you know what? I found out I was pregnant the day after that event, by the way. You did? Yeah, I got in the cab, just as a little aside. I got in yeah. the cab and I was about to throw up and I went, oh my God, what's wrong? And I thought, oh, it must just be that come down after <laughs> events because I'm an introvert, but I pretend I'm not in situations like that and that was an amazing event it was so big and I hugged 500 people and but I got in the cab and I went oh I'm gonna vomit and then the next day I just passed out and I had this big long nap but again I thought it was the introvert hangover yeah Yeah. I woke up from the nap and um and Mark goes oh what do you want for dinner I went Chinese and he goes I think we should have Indian I went no Chinese and he went (laughs) are you pregnant and I went oh my god I, I think I'm pregnant and I was pregnant. Oh my gosh. Anyway, the Good point story. of the story yeah. was yeah. that it was, um, I traveled with my family. Um, oh my God. It was so stressful. I was like, oh, breastfeeding one kid. Didn't realize I was pregnant. And it was because I felt guilty about going and doing a book tour by myself. Yeah. So then my mom came, my husband came, Ooh. we did all this stuff. It was the worst. The best part was being on stage, but then the rest of it was absolute shit, right? Yeah. So then when Chillpreneur came out, my publisher said, oh, are you going to do another book tour? And I went, oh, oh, I can't think of anything worse. Um, but I went to see Nigella, you know, Nigella Lawson. I know her she name, but I can't, I can't think of her She's face. the chef, the beautiful British chef. Yes. She's okay. Really yeah. Chill and beautiful. Yes. So she came to my town on part of her book tour and she just sat on a couch and someone asked her questions. And I went, why am I making this so hard? <laughs> so I, fe- I, went, I was like, I'm going to chill. How am I going to chill printer this? I decided to do it in a cinema chain. So I did a 14 city book tour. I organized it in one day because wow. I called up the marketing person of a cinema chain yes. and, yeah. and said, yes. I'm going to do each one in a cinema. Mm-hmm. I didn't have to pay for AV. I didn't have to pay for someone to set up chairs for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I didn't have to pay for a caterer because uh-huh. I just went, everyone's going to get a box of popcorn. They're going to sit in the cinema. Everyone knows where cinemas are. There's parking. This it's is easy. like, oh I did it. Gosh myself I turned up I did a whole tour myself and I found a book chain to come and sell books for me because they were in every city that I went to as oh well oh my god so it took me one day to organize it and each venue cost a thousand dollars to do mm-hmm. and I just I did two cities a week came home in between and I just went that's how you can do it yes and I and I did it in my like I did it during the day because that felt better to to me than doing it at night yeah it was so easy and it just I have to remind myself that too to go there's always an easier way what would what would work better for me yes because then I'll do it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is like that's like such a level of ease that I I would admire to be to like to think of on that level of how can I make this easier? How can I make this easier? Just not accepting that a book door has to be all of those things and all of those pieces. And well, you just. Yes. Cause you might start to go, but people won't want to do it in the day. And exactly. I'm like, but it's either mm-hmm. that or nothing, or I won't do it. Yeah. So, and, th- and that's where, where I see people who throw out um, their business or they, you know, they let things go because they don't think that they can choose. And so I'm like, well, if you're going to throw it out anyway, why not design it the way just, you, I want it? Oh, no one will buy it. But you were going to throw it away anyway. <laughs> so let's just try. No one will pay that. But you were going to do it for nothing anyway. So yeah. you're not going to lose anything. Yeah. And I think that's always just the philosophy of going, you may as, like, may as well. And I loved that book tour. It was so much fun. But it wouldn't have existed if I had to do it the way I did it in America. Yeah. Where it was like going, oh, man, this is hard yeah. work. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So is this kind of what chill and prosper is going to be about? Like, is it going to be these yes. stories? It's going to be all about creating the ease in your business. Yes. With, oh my gosh. with case studies about different people's industries too, because when the book first came out as chillpreneur, you know, people would contact me and say, well, that's great, but it doesn't work, work for me, for my industry, for because me. I'm not allowed yes. to. Yeah. I'm special. <laughs> yes. I'm right. special. And my industry has rules <laughs> and, um, when the my publisher asked me to do a new edition, 
you know, it's like the world has changed with the pandemic. You know, we there aren't as many rules as we think and they wanted case studies. So, um, yeah, so we, we got to do a new cover, new name and new content and new wow. bonuses. And yeah. one of the bonuses I did, by the way, anyone listening, go to denisedt.com slash prosper. That's where you get all the pre-order bonuses. And I'm just about, by the time this will air, it'll be on there, subliminal meditations in there because I'm really big on layering in your practices. And so you can listen to subliminal meditations while you're working and it's like you do double duty. And they're about developing a millionaire mindset and abundance mindset and overcoming fears and overcoming your resistance to marketing, all of those things. And that's one of the pre-order bonuses. Amazing. Oh my gosh, Denise. Thank yeah. you so, so much for coming on. Chill and Prosper is out right now. Again, like she said, denisedt.com backslash prosper. You'll find simple, actionable advice to help you find the path of least resistance to success. I cannot wait. I've already yeah. grabbed my pre-order. I cannot wait to just read more examples of how I can do business easy and how there's not those rules and constraints around what I'm allowed you to do. You can make in my business. everything. One of the chapters is called Keyless Life. And it's about finding those things in your life too. And this is where um, I was really motivated to create a book that's, um, you know, I kind of used to read business books that are written by men. And, you know, they're not having to also think about doing business while, you know, breastfeeding juggling. or a yes. child screaming. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Or like a kid pooping on you just before you're about to do something. Yeah. And, you know, so I I talk a lot about those really practical things in there too, giving yourself permission to get more help at home. Because I think if you had a really limited budget, I would rather do everything in my business myself, but get help at home with my kids and with my laundry, because that's the stuff that stresses me out. So there's things in there too. It's, It's not just about like, you know, crush the competition and, you know, hustle and grind. It's like, it's okay to get someone to help you with your laundry so you can make assets that can create abundance for your family forever. Yes. Our type of book, definitely the type of book for my audience, for sure. Again, thank you so much, Denise, for coming on. This has been so amazing. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Thank you so, so much. Everyone, again, you can check out Chill and Prosper at denisedt.com backslash prosper. Thank you, Denise. Thank you, everyone.